After your good den, as they say in England, buenos dias in my native tongue. I am Queen Catherine, the only true queen of Henry the Eighth, um, Catherine of Aragon, that is. In fact, due to my lineage versus the Tudors' lineage, I was the only legitimate element in an otherwise questionable monarchy. I can fill you in a bit more about that if you're so inclined, but we'll wait on that. Um, Corrigan Keynes asked me to speak to you in her place. She grows weary, you see, so she channeled me to give her talk this day. I am so sorry to be speaking in this dialect, <laughs> this silly, silly dialect, rather than in my rich Spanish-frosted English of the court. I am not sure you would comprehend the language of that times, so bear with me as I struggle a bit with this one. I haven't stopped learning and thinking over the last 500 years, as some of you who may have encountered me hither and yon may know. I'm often in places of education. Through the ether, somehow, a few years ago, I heard my name invoked, and I kind of grew curious and found it easy to ride on an electronic wave, as I think you call it in this time, a frequency or ether, as it were, into the strange world to have a look around. And it was really, really shocking at first. Who is new here in this world of second life? I see some of you have been here maybe longer than even I, but is anyone brand new or fairly new? <laughs> okay, well, even if you've been around for a while um, and you're not brand new, certainly you were shocked a bit. And I know when I first came to this place, it was really, really shocking. And I learned that such a thing in this time is called culture shock. And just like when you move from one place to next, and that certainly when I moved from my beautiful Spanish court into the very dank place um, in, in England, it was shocking. But now they have a word for that. Um, there, those, it's not a word of my time, this culture shock. Um, homesickness? Yes, homesickness is even mentioned in Exodus, but it's not quite the same thing. No, there's stress and anxiety and confusion. Although I died 500 years ago, when I fell from a great height into a cemetery in this world, I thought maybe I had died again. <laughs> And so it took me a bit of time to find my footing. But although it was disoriented, I wasn't scared because you know that I am a warrior. Um, pregnant, I led the army against the Scots. And you may recall that Henry appointed me regent of England when he went to France on a military campaign. And you may know, or maybe not, that that was my doing because... He wasn't as used to war as I was, so better me to meet the Scots than him. I sent him to fight alongside of my father to learn. So when the Scots invaded England, and oh well, I remembered that, even over the centuries, in 1513 in our year of the Lord, um, I had to be there to address and inspire the troops, heavily pregnant or not. After our victory, and thanks to Thomas Lovell, who had raised the troops at my request from the Midlands, I sent a letter to Henry, along with a piece of the bloody coat of King James the Fourth of Scotland, who died in the battle. And then Harry could use it as a banner. And I was always the thoughtful wife and queen. James, by the way, was not a bad person. He believed in education, and he did lift that 45-year ban on golf. But you just can't go around invading England and expect to necessarily live through that experience. So anyway, the oddness of this strange world was tolerable for one used to battle and strangeness. <laughs> oh, what can I say? Eventually, here in Second Life, I was attracted to this place 
to this Renaissance island. Why? Because of the music. I heard music coming from some place, music that I knew and I loved. Even Henry's past time with good company. Anybody familiar with that? Ba 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 excuse me. I used to have a great singing voice, but not anymore. But anyway, um yeah, he wrote that for me because he wasn't raised to be king, so he learned a lot. He was very scholarly and continued to have a good mind, and he wrote many of my favorite pieces in those happy, happy times. But what you say digress. Corrigan Keynes actually invited me here to talk about the history of Renaissance Island and Second Life. And she gave me a copy of the, what you call it, a business plan that contains the history of the island. And I will give that to you um, in a moment. And <laughs> history of this island. Do you know how funny that sounds to someone who is over 500 years old? This place, this Renaissance Island, formed in 2007 in February in the cold months. So what's that? Seven years. It's barely out of the womb. But the idea behind it was not unlike our court. You see, the royal courts were a place where ideas were exchanged, sometimes very dangerous ideas. <laughs> like everyone ought to read the Bible. <laughs> Imagine that women should be educated. Um, Thomas More's daughter, Margaret, was a prime example of that. I shall have a picture of her someplace. And the court was an international gathering place, much like Renaissance Island. And Renaissance Island, like Harry's court, is a place where people of different backgrounds, guilds, and expertise can gather to learn, build, and create together. So, in um, that um, dark, cold winter, that February of 2007, the Alliance Library System that had been in the um, state, as you call them here, state of Illinois in this country, the United States, um, they went to this place, to this other place, the Second Life, and I am heard that Lori, Lori Bell was behind this. And so um, it was her idea to bring people together, much like our court brought people together, scholars and people that had different knowledge and disciplines together, and people that loved the Tudor period, and to um, have them live together, work together, and create together. And at one point, we had a musician over there, um, Tom Dowd, who um, in this other world, in the real world, was in the country of Switzerland in Freiburg, and he taught in a music conservatory, and he provided many beautiful, um, much beautiful music from my own Harry and from um, Thomas Tallis and the great great musicians and composers of my time, and it was just wonderful um, to hear um, his music and his students' music, and it was so sad to find out that he died, and um, it was a very, very um, dark day on Renaissance Island when we lost um, Tom. Um, before that, he had been kidnapped by the Spanish at one point. Um, but I shall not talk of that. Not now. But um, hopefully there will be someone joining that can bring back the music that we loved. And, and uh, so that could be in the future. And so um, what else to say about Renaissance Island? I've observed in this world that one can find a way in without putting down roots, as it were, and joining a community. People of this century, this 21st century, as you call it, just like folks living in my time, are communal. We are human. We gather. As I observe this place, this Renaissance island, um, 
they who are librarians or scribes and educators should be in places like this. For one thing, it's not only um, the librarians that are here, but um, users and maybe library supporters that are here. And they're in alternate realities like this virtual world in Second Life. And they continue to be there. And it's such an interesting place to collaborate and to network. And just like the esteemed libraries of Europe and Alexandria before that, this is a place where many disciplines can come together to share, to learn, and experience synergy. We did not have the word synergy in my time. <laughs> you may find this world expands your available resources. There are many people of many languages in Second Life, strangers that you do not have to fear carry the flag. If you had a patron who needed to know how to say I love you in one of the Scandinavian languages, you would be able to find someone. If you were interested in learning maybe a bit more about 16th century Spanish, because the Spanish that I spoke, um, just like the English that is spoken today, was different. It is not the same language. But you might be able to find people that help you, or a support group as they're called. We did not really have support groups in my time. Um, we had confidants and they served the same purpose. And being here in Second Life or in other universes can make your library more visible if you're a librarian or whatever you're doing. If you're in museums, it's another way to impact and to um, carry your work. Um, to those that may not know about it otherwise. And uh, it also makes, especially with librarians, um, we have had to, and I include myself in that because um, Corrigan is a librarian, <laughs> but um, we've had to disband stereotypes along the way. And so I think she's done a very good job of that. And so when we connect, with community in places where community is and we're seen as relevant and uh, forward thinking, it's all good. And um, certainly this environment um, stimulates creative development and thinking. And so that's part of what Corrigan um, asked me to pass along. And she also, um, we were talking about this, <laughs> much like we had apprentices, scholars, musicians, and libraries, you have opportunities on Renaissance Island. And you know, Renaissance Island is not exactly like it was during the time I rode my horses through the English countryside. It just cannot be. <laughs> and I laugh at some of that. Do you know that they have animals fenced in in the parish? And the streets are absolutely pristinely clean. That just would not happen in, in my time. But um, for those of you who would like to get involved, um, Renaissance Island is looking for um, folks of all disciplines to, um, to participate and to build community there. And you can learn more about my times. And then you can make adjustments. Once um, somebody put a bale of hay um, on the island, and, and baling hay was not developed for a very long time. And you can experiment with some of the period dances. And uh, there's also a library on Renaissance Island. And it would be nice to see even an enhanced library. We did not use the word enhance. <laughs> um, I love to read, you know, and Harry had excellent libraries. But here are some other ways that we would love to have you involved over on Renaissance. Um, programs, um, weekly programs, monthly programs on an array of topics. Corrigan Keynes hosted a weekly storytelling event for a long time. And uh, we would love to reinstate um, storytelling on a regular basis. And there can be exhibits, um, tutor themes. Sex in Tudor Times would probably be a very big hit. 
well, there is a book on it. <laughs> Actually, that was in Elizabethan times, but still, um, um, I'm not saying that that should be a topic, but just a, one of many um, opportunities. We once had an uh, um, exhibit on Valentine's Days in, in Tudor times, or an act of a figure. Um, it's really fun to watch people enact me, for instance. <laughs> it's it's fun. And we can have book discussions and author discussions and uh, for learning opportunities um, you can design pathfinders and guides for library resources or embed stuff in objects. Um, and I think we may need to fix some of them because Renaissance Island is not a stagnant um, place and over the seven years the builds have changed a little bit. Um, so there is always room to embed note cards. Um, it's kind of like a living, what you call it today, the Wikipedia. So our island is kind of like a wiki. If you click on a clock tower, you may get information about a clock tower. If you click on the market square um, cross, you will get information about um, crosses and marketplaces. and and that particular um, cross attests that our community is very old. And so with that, um, do you have any questions? Mm -hmm.